Hello everybody, and welcome to Mr. Table Size's Hall of Automotive Mediocrity. For those of you who are uninformed, this is where I will be looking at what is dubbed the most mediocre cars in the world, and I will be giving my input on them and determining if I would own them. Now, of course, the second-gen Cadillac Seville was going to end up on the list because of the fact that it's widely one of the most hated Cadillacs in existence. Most people hate it because of its, um, <clears throat> interesting styling, but there's also the fact the quality control in it was definitely rickety for a Cadillac. It was prone to transmission and electrical failure. The interior was fitted with fake wood paneling, which is definitely something you don't want to see when you're spending that much money for a car. It came later with the variable displacement, which the variable displacement takes a V8 and then shuts down cylinders in order to save gas, so it goes from a V8 to a 6 to a 4. Problem with that is, is the amount of time it takes in order to do that can be measured on a sundial. There's also the fact that later on they decided to fit it with the lovely Oldsmobile 350 cubic inch diesel V8, which its reputation is pretty much well known because of how ridiculously terrible it was. Now, here we go. Would I own it? Yes, because I love the second-gen Seville, and I love its just over-the-top styling. Well, it would not be a hall of automotive mediocrity without the 1978 to 1983 Dodge Challenger, also known as the Plymouth Sapporo, which is pretty much one of the most hated cars for any of your hardcore Challenger fans because of the fact that it's not really a Challenger, it's a Mitsubishi Galant underneath. There's also the fact that despite being called the Challenger, it only came with an inline four-cylinder engine and in the biggest displacement producing only 105 horsepower, which is definitely unworthy of the Challenger name. Although it did come in RT and TA versions, which really weren't much sportier, but gave you nicer looking trim, I guess. I know that for some, at least from what I've heard, because one of my one of my good friends, uh, Mr. Blood Brother N, definitely not a shout out, expressed that he did not like the front end on it, which I can imagine was probably a common argument with a lot of these cars, was back in the day a lot of people probably did not think they looked good. Now, of course, once again, we get to the question. Would I own it? Totally. Why not? I would totally drive it just to intentionally irritate any of your hardcore Mopar guys. Just because. Oh yes, the Zimmer Quicksilver, a car that cost twice as much as a Cadillac Eldorado but had about 50% of the build quality. It was built on a Pontiac Fiero, which that car has a reputation. Despite being built on a Fiero, it only had a top speed of 121 miles per hour due to the immense weight of adding all the components onto it to make it look nicer. And ultimately, this new body would be kind of hit or miss of people due to the fact the styling is definitely an acquired taste. Now, would I own it? <laughs> Why wouldn't I? It is absolutely awesome! Sure, it's not very sporty, and it's not built with the best quality, but who else is gonna have one in your neighborhood? It is awesome. Now, of course, you had to know that the Ford Pinto would be on the list, due to the fact that uh, the Ford Pinto has a very interesting reputation as basically being napalm on wheels. Aside from that fact, it actually wasn't a terrible car. But when you neglect to fix a problem that would only cost $11 per car, it kind of hurts the reputation of the vehicle. Now, granted, in spite of that, would I own it? Of course! In spite of its infamy, it does have charm. 
Now, of course, a car as bad as the 1978 Olds 442 was going to end up here. It is a car that is well known and well hated. And for good reason. One, the body style is pretty dang hideous. Two, it doesn't live up to the 442 name. Even the biggest possible engine, with the best possible performance combination, you would get at maximum around 145 horsepower, which is pretty dang anemic for a muscle car. Worst of all was the fact the 0 to 60 time was around 9 seconds with the best possible engine, and at the worst, with the smallest V8, around almost 13 seconds. Now I know, I know, you're saying... There's no possible way that Mr. Table Size would drive this. This car is absolutely rancid. Well, guess what? You're wrong. I would own it, and I would drive it proudly because of the fact that it is such a terrible car, and I love genuine terrible cars. Future Table Size here. When I say genuine terrible cars, I mean cars that are so terrible that there's something you gotta love about them. Cars like the Aztec can commit on reading. This now concludes Volume 1. Well, I think that's gonna about do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Um, don't know what the next video will be. It'll likely be a video on Russian tanks of World War II, because those are definitely <clears throat> interesting. But yeah, so... That about wraps this up. I don't know what else to say here, and I don't know what else to do, so, uh, bye, I guess?